Hello fellow sim racers. As promised on this week's episode of Talking Sims, I've filmed a sim racing coaching session with Nils Naujox. Now, for those that don't know, Nils is one of the fastest guys around in Assetto Corsa Competizione, as well as being the team manager for Red Bull Racing Esports, G2 Esports, and as you're about to see, he also does some one-to-one -one coaching for sim racers as well. Now, the video that you're watching at the moment has been heavily cut down to keep it to a vaguely sensible runtime. But if you do want to see the full 70 minute cut, it's available up online right now on my second channel and there's a link in the video description and top comment. The full length video is a bit more conversational and it also does have quite a lot more detail. So if you're enjoying the radio friendly edit, then it's probably worth giving the album cut a go too. I've also posted some side by side comparison laps on the second channel as well, which are, uh, they're instructive. Anyway, on with the coaching. So here we are in Assetto Corsa Competizione. Nils has taken a look at my laps, my data. So doctor, tell me how bad is it? Um, it's not bad at all. Uh, we'll certainly be able to uh, spot a few patterns as I usually do with most people. And we're all about finding just a tiny bit of time in every corner. Um, and we, I mean, it's, it's easier to approach it that way. That was the first thing, for example. Until here, looks fine, fine too. And that will be something that we can look into through the, yeah, whole of the corner, basically. <laughs> it's always turn three, isn't it? It's, it's a tricky one, yeah. Yes, here will be something too, to, to spot and really something that you can change. And will be quite easy, I think, for you. Yeah. Similar pattern, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I can already you're, see a few things, right? You're, uh, you're, you're building me up to something here, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> of course. That was a good one. Not aggressive enough, maybe, but not too much to adjust there. I guess that's also about fine. Well, so high brakes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, looks more like the maybe the slow corners or the the mid-speed corners. But it really only starts to show when we look at where you lose the time, um, what we can see in the data. There's certainly well, we, the we, same we, pattern, yeah. yeah. We cheated because you've already shown me the graph, so I know where some <laughs> of the bits are. <laughs> I, I was consistent throughout the lab, but I think it will be um, interesting for you to see where it really starts to, to become a lot. Okay, I guess um, this is it. I, I spotted a few things that I will be able to point out to you. I think we're this this is a point where we go a bit into concept. So you're starting to turn in and if we get the menu to disappear we will see your driving inputs here as well. And as you start to turn in, you will um release the brakes a little, so you're doing a little trail braking and to me overall that already looks fine. Because you're trailing deep into you and once you hit the curb you are almost yeah immediately out of the brake. So technique wise that's perfectly fine. Slow down a bit and move to that exact point. Um, again, same same thing as in the braking zone. There's just additional track available, and um, if you're going, I mean, for a race, I wouldn't take the risk. But in a in a qualifying lap, certainly, and I use this camera um, a lot to just show it from above, that there's just probably half a meter or so. And then um, I think one important thing is to not watch or, or look at individual corners, but see um, corner combinations as as a whole. So yeah. in this first sector here, you would have the first corner, the second and the third, and it really ends um, at the braking zone for, for turn four, um, that you want to see this as, as a unit. So when you think about where you want to gain the lap time, it's usually going to be the straight because you're spending a lot of time on the straight and rather very little time compared in the corners. So what, what I'm on about is you, when entering here, you have to think about how you eventually will approach the straight uh, exit of turn three. And that will lead you to making, starting to make sacrifices in the two corners prior to turn three to carry as much speed to turn three and out of turn three. And if we now just go a little further in your lab, we will see this looks fine. 
you're going a bit wide, maybe on the exit here out of turn one, having a tiny bit sacrificed entry into turn two, and now you have to lift a bit over the curb, which is fine to not trigger the traction control too much. But now I think it, it's about all right. You, you try to do the sacrifice already. Um, do you see my mouse, by the way? Yes, I do, yeah. Okay, so there, some people do the error of using all the track available here on the right. And then they will have the, the sacrifice entry on turn three. So they will, if we look at the data, they will likely gain time on me in the first two corners, but lose everything into turn three and onto the straight. So you're kind of making already the right attempt into the right hander, sacrificing the corners before a little to, to open up turn three. But I think the trouble you are having in this one is I sense some insecurity on, on entry. <laughs> very, very much so, 100%. So what, what I would do now is switch to Motec and zoom in a bit on turn three. So we have the straight that ends about here. Then there's the braking for turn one. I think braking point-wise very similar. The graphs look very similar. For you even, um, maybe I should say that all your graphs are in color on mine's are a white for this uh, comparison. So we can see your trail braking goes even deeper than mine, which is usually a good thing but we can see some, some differences in terms of speed through the section already, right? So you can see that I'm going slower into turn one, right? So yeah. the white line is below the green line and the difference is quite big on turn entry. You're actually 13, 14 kilometers faster than I am. <laughs> and, and this is what I said that you were going a bit wide out of turn one and then yeah. sacrificing a bit in turn two. And then you can see from turn two, I'm already faster all the way through turn three. So while you're quicker for, let's say, this, this area here between these two dots I'm trying to point out. Yeah, so if we bring up what Motec has is the, the time bar or the time delta that develops throughout the lab, we can see that initially you're even a tenth up into corner one, but then it really starts to fade away from you to, yeah. through turn two and three. And then while, of course, we enter the corner with, yeah, pretty much about the same gap, I'm, I'm a few hundreds ahead for uh, maxing out more uh, in the fifth gear, probably. So it's three and a half hundreds, if you will. But then by the end of corner three and onto the straight ahead, it's, we're looking at three tenths already. So let's try to, to find how they uh, come to be. So what I saw here um, for you is that you're going off throttle very early into the right-hander, whereas I'm throwing the car into it way longer and then going out of the throttle at a way later time. And essentially, that means you're overslowing the car. And what you're doing is, and we will see this throughout the whole corner if you roll through now, is that you're staying on throttle like halfway through all the time. Because you are you don't want the reaction of the car to, to go further to the inside yet. You're delaying the apex artificially, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if you would release the, the throttle fully, then the weight of the car would move forward. You would get load on the front tires and get additional grip for turn in. And that would allow you to go a lot faster, first of all. And you could also do something that you somehow did in the corner one, turn a little too much if you feel insecure. Because if you feel insecure, it's usually because of the rear, not because of the front, right? Undersear is something we feel safe with. It's it's odd and we don't like it, but it's never going to make us crash. But yeah. having an oversteer car is something that is really um, yeah hard, hard to work with. So you, what I see is you're trying to reduce the harsh reaction of the car. Yeah, and let's go there in, in terms of data. And like this is the entry here to to turn three, and we can see that your your red trail of the throttle is going down to, let's say, 50%, then going back in and out throughout the corner a bit. Whereas for me, I'm just going full throttle into the corner for yeah, just, just a little deeper, right? So my, at my turn in point or at the point where I want the reaction of the front, I'm doing 172. And by this hmm. point in time, you can already see that from here to here, really, your speed doesn't change at all. And how much how much later did you lift off? You, uh, I can't quite see the numbers on. Yeah, that's it's that's a spot. Okay. So you're lifting off at 1,040 meters into the lab, and for me that would be 1,098. So about 50 meters. Wow, that's a long long way deeper into the corner. Uh, yeah, uh, you're going to send me the replay file so I, I can actually look at that, uh, and I'm going to do a side by side lap at the end of this video so so people can see what that actually looks like. But 60 meters is. Uh, that's a long way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so you are the red dot, so you're on the inside line, and I'm, I'm the white dot. So you can see that on entry, 
where you're already lifting off. I'm just building speed way longer into the corner. Then I lift off and have a slowdown pretty much until here. And then I have a very narrow point where I'm actually going slow. So what I'm aiming for as, as a concept is I either want to be accelerating or decelerating, but it's very, very rare that I want to have a stable speed. So what I would want you to do driving wise is just try going in there faster and try to trigger that reaction of the front by going out of the throttle a little more immediate and then really have some amount of coasting in the middle of the corner. And then picking up throttle for us, I would say that's pretty much the same um, point in time, more or less. But I think the exit for you will change a lot once you change the entry and actually the entry in turn one. That's where it all starts here. First of all, yes, here you do it better with um, maxing out on, on the available track. But we will see, and it will be more visible when you, when you go into my replay, is that this braking zone here for turn four is actually not straight. And we can see if we roll through it slowly, you're pretty much braking in a straight line and you're kind of drifting towards the outside of, of the black uh, ideal line that Kunos has uh, thankfully painted for us already. <laughs> so if we look at this from above, you can see that like this is the ideal line here and you, you're almost yeah, outside of it. So you're again color and I'm white and first thing we can see is my braking paint this point is quite a bit later. So looking down here, 1612 is where you start and for me it's going to be about 12, 15 meters later. So just, I mean, at that speed, we're, we're talking a tenth or so, right? It's, it's not much. Um, but then, <clears throat> again, similar pattern to, to turn three, you're slowing down through a certain speed, and then you're keeping it, right? Indicated by the green line being nearly horizontal. Whereas for me, I keep decelerating the car down to, to very late in the corner. So while you're saying you, you, you're trying for a late apex, you do this in the form of on track uh, with the current position, but you're not putting a late apex in terms of speed. And that will lead to you, 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 basically you have the speed that you need later on in the corner way too early. And what you wanted to do is keep decreasing speed up until maybe here later in the corner. And you already have the perfect speed for there by now. So you're just giving away something where you could be traveling faster onto this point back there. So if we roll through it now, uh, let me speed it up a little. We can see line-wise, I think this is perfectly fine, but we can see again that you're always in the throttle kind of correcting for the initial too slow entry speed, and you're just staying at a stable pace throughout the corner. There's, see, there's sort of two problems there, you're saying, in the sense that because I am not carrying the speed in, I'm not able to load up the front tyres, so I'm having to compensate for that by doing stupid things like keeping the throttle further in, which is creating this sort of half state of not really accelerating, not really decelerating, and uh, just having to wait for the next bit of the corner to happen. Exactly. So basically, you are ready very early for a later point in the corner. And now there's just some, I mean, several seconds for you of, of waiting going on, where you yeah. are 20, 30% into the throttle, just burning fuel because you're not uh, going any faster, right? So your speed is about 120 something throughout the corner and not, not, not some, there isn't much change to it while you're still in the throttle. I would assume that you actually have more fuel usage than I have just because you're spending more time on throttle. So this looks, first of all, you, here you're definitely maxing out on the track available, but it seems to me, and it might be more pronounced again with the camera above, is you're really on the outside verge of where the ideal line is painted by Kunis, and it's always a great reference where you want to be with the car. I think you will have overslowed the car already again. <laughs> yeah. And now, let's see how, how it works out. Yeah, and now the car starts rotating in, right? You, you feel that yeah. you would clip the apex and even the grass. So you go into the throttle to stop the car from decelerating, which just means you have decelerated too much already. Yeah, so again, you're a bit overslowing, and then you're, okay, I want to turn in now. And then the car is already, I mean, looking here, it's probably 10, 12 kilometers that you're going to be slower. And then you, you turn in, and then, oh, damn it, I'm, I'm too slow already. I have to pick up the throttle for it to, to, to not end up on the inside curb or grass even again. So similar pattern. I carry more speed into it, and then we match later again. So on throttle, everything is similar again out of the corner, just into it, carrying the speed into it. And the, the technique here is 
um, you will you will see it with the screen back grab I'm doing is as I start to turn into this corner, I, let's say the the break graph going out of the break is pretty much mirrored to to yeah. the turning graph, so I'm always trying to be at this hundred percent or hundred and one percent level of the front tire. Whereas you're like up until here, you're at 105, 110 percent, and then all of a sudden you're going out of the brake and uh, allow a lot of turning. So you're at, I don't know, 95 percent of the tire, and everything can be translated into turning. That probably gives you the insecurity because the rear can't keep up with the amount of grip the front end has. I really want to suggest to to everyone to always watch your own lap. I mean, if you, if you're lacking lap time, watch your own lap from different angles because the cockpit view is always kind of locked in. And in the sim, great opportunity. And I saw that when coaching the real drivers, that they're like, "Oh man, that's such an interesting angle that we're never going to have. We don't have a chase cam in the real car." Um, let me do one more thing for that corner, and I want to see where, let's say, where you pick up the throttle and you actually there you stay stable for quite an amount here at six percent <laughs> throttle very precise there and then as you start to increase because that matches with the point where uh, i'm still breaking so let's match that with the video slow it down and see where you move away from the six percent to to higher percentage and that would be here so if we go above now again it's very early in the corner isn't it wow <laughs> it's very early where you start increasing shot and this is the point where i stop braking yeah <laughs> right so i i trail the brake in like let's say from here i start to release the brake a little and start to turn more and more and more and at this point in time i will be out of the brake and near my maximum turning angle and probably be in that slight understeer zone asking 101 102 percent of the tire and just let the car coast a bit to get rid of the excess speed that i still have and that probably lasts until here or so and then i can just pretty much go flat out with a with this uh with a throttle Yeah, this one, I'm, I think you, you did that well. You're not carrying as much speed on the exit because you gave away some, some track available. Uh, using the inside curb perfectly fine with the Mercedes. Um, you, you, again, this little throttle thing, but in this corner is not as important to, to avoid it. But there's certainly, I think we go a lot more uh, on the right side here of the sausage curb again. Yeah. And that just allows you more track and you will see if, if you aim for that, you will immediately feel okay i could have gone into the throttle earlier just use more track carry more speed up the hill but that's that's a tiny thing that's easier to adjust i think the line wise was right uh, braking seemed all right and uh, no biggies there i think the next one will have a little more information so what you do right and now you ask like this this turn in reaction you you demand it from the car right that you, you go out of the throttle completely, let the car pitch forward to get the load transfer, load the front tires up, make them turn in. And you even have a slight, uh, very slight amount of braking into this corner, which um, I guess in the data will look very uh, similar for me. So yeah, you're here, the white one going out of the, th sorry, <laughs> you're the colored one. So you're going out of the throttle and you have fair amount of braking going on you for quite a long time. This is, um, usually this is a very nice, trail you can you can do through this corner you always keep the front tire loaded which is a good good approach the difference here i think is that just probably from experience um is that i have way more confidence with the car again i, I just throw it in way more i do the same thing right go out of the throttle quickly ask a reaction tap the brakes a little bit but then throughout the whole corner i do nothing anymore right um, ah, there is throttle corrections even going on. So I was I was lying. So <laughs> whereas I, I was telling you before, if you have to make a correction in the corner, use the brake. In this one, I'm doing the opposite. <laughs> but it's not necessarily the right thing. You're, you're having the right approach. I think we're matching in terms of where we put the apex of speed and where we put the apex of car placement in that corner. It, it's always a tricky one here to, to find the exact thing. So I'm carrying more speed through the corner and we are... I mean, you're even earlier in the throttle than I am, then have to lift off to, to not uh, get the track limit. So ideally, of course, is you just don't have to lift off once once you commit it to the throttle. And the way I do it is just in the data, I'm just later in the throttle here. Yeah. So I'm letting the car roll a bit longer, get away with that excess speed, but carry, I mean, similar pattern to before, I just carry a little more into it, let the car roll a bit, and then, um, yeah, wait, wait until I hit the, the speed and apex on track 
Um, I think your hairprint actually looked good. And we can see a little trade-off here is you gain time back on entry. So you're pretty yeah. much going faster into it. And I focus more on the exit. So let's take a quick look there. Yeah, it's an interesting one. This is one that I saw in the data and I looked at it and I thought, oh, I shouldn't be going that much quicker than you on the way in. But because it's such a short run down to uh, to the right hander afterwards, it, yeah, I I guess guess it can it pay off. It can pay off, yeah. definitely. Um, I mean, let, let's see what we're talking about. So on the, I always look at where we apply the brakes. So 1.06 seconds is what you're behind. And then next braking zone is where I compare to. And that's, yeah, just a, a tenth loss there, right? It's not much, but I think there's something to find by changing the approach a bit by focusing more on the exit, because if we just, I mean, it, it's going to be tiny, but you'll see on my recording later is, let's say this is the amount of time you're going quicker. And then my amount of time going quicker is all this again. So let me roll it through for a second. A uh, breaking point uh, looks fine to me. And then trailing out of the break. Yeah, it just seems you I mean, you're not going even deep, right? It's. Yeah, it's, I, I might have the, the Apex a little bit later. Let me just yeah. try to get that second back and then go to, to the... It looks like, to me, uh, it looks like I'm turning in earlier, ever so slightly earlier than maybe I should be. And if we go from above now, that's actually a little, I would say, let's go closer maybe, a little before the actual middle of the corner, which I would see here somewhat. Yeah. And for me, the Apex will rather be about here or so. So would you do that by turning in slightly later? Uh, let's ask data. Or... Yeah, that's us. So by the looks of it, um, I'm getting the rotation done even even a lot earlier, and I'm getting the rotation done on, on the throttle a lot because I pick it up way earlier. We would have to have the replay side by side, I think, for this one to really spot it. But I can see I'm, I'm having oversteer on the exit, so I guess I'm just asking more of the rear tires. And I can see the traction control kicking in here a little earlier for me as well. So relying a bit on the technology in the car to, to help me out there. Yeah, actually, I need you to be done with, with braking a little bit earlier, then let the car rotate on its own. You kind of have the right idea. <clears throat> Let me catch my voice. <clears throat> kind of have the right idea by you trying to flick the car to the left and get a wider entry into this one. And the difference that you will see when you look at my replay later is, <clears throat> again, you will have to throttle. We can't see it right now, but it's all the way you're 30% throttle. <clears throat> and then having just one apex late in the corner is what you're aiming for, I assume. Uh, yes, yeah. And for me, um, let me go to that point. Okay, right right here, I will be not aiming here for the grandstands or for wherever the, yeah, like the marshal will be, but my car will be pointing more towards there. And I'll have, again, some sort of double apex approach in this corner, similar to turn five, um, the, the hairpin, the left hairpin. Um, so all the difference that's going to happen is, and I think we'll see that best in, in the track map again, is I will be close to the curb inside the corner, then drift away from the curb a bit and then come back close later again. So let's look at Motec there. Go to turn number, what's it called? Number nine is actually the left kink is a corner in Motec. So number 10, <clears throat> it is that you overslow the car again, then stay stable, right? We can see this plateau somewhat in, in the data again. And I just, Go in quicker, clip the inside curb once, then drift a bit wide, slow down the car to, to a second later apex, and then have the car straightened a bit earlier and can tap, just tap into more throttle, making the same thing as before, asking more in terms of weight transfer of the car, loading the tires up a little more. So I'm, I'm saying it's a V-shape, right? And I'm, I'm painting this kind of in here, but um, on track, it will rather be being close here and being the, the far away point of the curb won't be more than a meter or so. So the V yeah. is kind of, this is the farthest away point of the curb here. Probably the hardest area of the circuit to drive, uh, for me at least. Yeah, it, uh, it's a tricky one. The track falls away from the, the car gets very light. You're into braking, have to accelerate quickly again, have to flick it over. So it's very technical. So it's easy to lose a lot of time there. And uh, let me stop it actually at the entry where you hit the brakes is, I mean, you're making use of all the tracks, so perfectly fine there. 
um, let's we have to view all three corners ahead as a unit because if you sacrifice something or let's say if you go too quick through this one you're going to end up wide won't be able to get it across for the chicane won't be able to get it across for the second part of the chicane and then lose all the time on the straight so similar to corner one two and three where i told you to look at the straight or have the straight in mind already i need you to do the same for this one basically um, so let's maybe roll it through a little let's see how you kind of make the sacrifices throughout the section going in there already on the throttle again okay not clipping the curb you definitely want to have that because it gives you some sort of additional rotation i'm uh, i'm afraid of sausages <laughs> yeah maybe you need to drive the bentley around here and then you can get closer <laughs> to this one <laughs> Let's see where the car ends up. So it seems like you're drifting very far to the outside here, right? Almost going to that curb. And now you're just having trouble um, getting the car uh, on, a, on the right side, on the outside, before having to flick it in for the left-hander. And you will end up not breaking in the straight line here, pr pretty much. So yeah, yeah, trying to get it over. And now you're running out of time, right? So you yeah. start braking in, yeah, in a way that you can't break a lot because you still have to do a lot of turning. Let's assume the entry of the chicane is 90 degree. Then what you have to do in terms of turning now has become essentially 130 degree. Um, so what I need you to do in this one is sacrifice a little more of the corner before and get the car across more easy to the right side here. I guess most of the time here will be lost if we, yeah, you can see it here already. Let me, let me zoom in there a bit to this section that all the time you're losing onto this main straight here. Yeah, so how how do we do it differently? First of all, you brake very hard for the first right-hander, forcing the car probably into some sort of understeer. Then you release the brake too much to get the fronts to grip up and turn. And by that point in time, you will have, um, yeah, have made the car unstable in a way. Um, and then you'll pick up the throttle again to keep the speed up. But the main thing here is, what we can see this time, is you're carrying more speed through this right-hander, which is why you end up wider on the exit. And if we just click into here, we're talking, I mean, it looks small in the graph, but we're talking seven, eight kilometers that I'm going slower than you do. So you're even in the data, at least, right? From here, you're gaining time back initially. And then as we, like on the short straight between the right hander and the chicane, I'm picking up way more throttle and I'm like eight, nine kilometers faster, faster at the breaking point. And I'm also then braking later and sacrificing a lot in the left-hander of the chicane to then focus solely on the exit onto the main straight. So going into here, and this is where we open up, um, 11, 11 kilometers slower or even 12, 13 in the left-hander of the chicane, which sounds quite a lot, right? It's a big sacrifice I make to just get the car into here, flick it across the, this left side curb that you yeah, kind of avoid it probably because you feel the sausage again, which is fine. I mean, it's not too bad, not too much. But now you're running just a tiny bit wide for the right-hander. And then you have to slow down the car more to get over with the right hand and then have to wait a little more to get the power down. And I think this is where the main time loss in the section will come from. So yeah, I guess this is this is your lab. Um, overall, summing up, there's a bit of more exit focus needed in some occasions. There's needed a bit more carrying more speed into the corner, not allowing yourself to make corrections on the throttle inside the corner, yeah. trying to get the speed aligned to like the speed apex, as I want to call it, to the physical apex where you put the car on track, match those. Um, and maybe try, I mean, that's not a big issue for you, but just a tiny bit to match the steering input to the amount of braking to always only ask as much from the tire as you want and never go to this 105% something. So I think that probably brings things to a bit of a close. There's lots I'm going to go away and focus on. But Niels, first of all, thank you so much for dedicating your time today to uh, to coaching me and, and giving me the opportunity to improve my driving. If anyone else in my audience wants to, to have a go at this themselves and see where they can find some time, how do they find you and how can they get the process started? So best to get in touch probably is either Twitter or even better would be uh, Discord. Uh, I guess I just dropped you the link for my Discord server, which is named after myself. And um, I think we just go from there. We have a lot of technological stuff going on in this Discord, uh, have setups there. And yeah, I'm just way closer to everyone there than I would be on Twitter. 
After my coaching session with Nails, I had to jump in the rig and see if I could apply those lessons to the racing sim. Now, just a quick reminder, if you want to see the full video, it's live over on the second channel and I'll put a link in the video description and probably in the top comment and honestly anywhere else I can spam it. But the big takeaway here was that after 20 or so laps of practice, and it did take a little bit of practice to apply all of the various lessons that Nils had taught me, I was able to get my time down from a 145.1 in my initial lap down to a 144.2, which was, well, that's nine tenths of a second, which is a huge chunk of time, uh, whichever way you look at it. On top of that, the best sectors from that session added up to 143.895, we'll call it 143.9, which is just shy of half a second short of Nils' reference time, which for someone like me is absolutely incredible. What it does show is that with a little bit more work, I should be able to consistently hit that time. After 48 hours of reflection, and going back over the materials while editing these videos, it's incredibly obvious to me at least where the value lies in a coaching session like this. If you want to see my lap compared to Neil's lap and my original lap compared to the fastest lap that I set in this new session, then that's also gonna be live on the second channel by the time you're hearing this. So I guess that just about brings everything to a close here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can see more content like this in the future. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.